everybody wants to play better, more interesting solos. But most of the time we get caught up in the details. So you're worrying about what node you're landing on, what scale you're using. But if you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, then you can actually improve your solos quite easily. Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. In this video, I'm going to give you three ways that you can evaluate your solos that are gonna help you create a lot of variation and add some new things to the way you're soloing without having to start learning new scales or licks or arpeggios. The idea is to think more like a listener. We're all trying to improve as musicians and guitar players. And when we're trying to improve, we, we tend to sort of think about technical things or very specific things. So we're worrying about what scale we're playing, what technique we're using, if it's in time. But sometimes if you take a step back and just listen to the whole really as a piece of music uh, and as a whole solo and not as what you're playing in bar three on the two end, then you actually get some information that you can also work with. And that's an easy way to improve your solos. And we always forget to look at that. A thing that's important to remember with this is that the three topics that I'm going to go over here are there to create variation. So that means that they'll have two extremes and you kind of want to have both of those extremes in your solo because that's what's giving you the variation. The first thing I want to talk about is phrase length. So if you listen back to your solo, you can listen if you're playing the same length of phrase all the time and if you're making some variation with that. And of course, there are a lot of different things uh, that can change in a phrase. So you can have a long phrase with a few notes and you can also have longer phrases with a lot of notes. Mostly I play jazz music, so in jazz we tend to play fairly long, fairly dense phrases with really a lot of the same type of notes, so a lot of eight notes or a lot of sixteenth notes. But you can actually play, as I said, a really long phrase with only a few notes, and you can also play uh, a very short phrase with a lot of fast notes. You can of course use the different phrase lengths. Very often it works as if you're playing sort of a call response with different phrase lengths. That could be one way of thinking about it when you're trying to work on it. can vary how the phrase length works in different contexts. So when I'm playing on this vamp, it feels a little bit like um, the short phrase is going to be more like a question and it has a little bit more tension and the longer phrases tend to sound like an answer and a release. Work with this and feel that tension. If you're conscious of whether you're creating tension with the shorter phrases, then you're also naturally going to make some release uh, at a later point in the solo. And that's going to give you a solo more of a story, more of a longer arc, which is really what you want to have in your solo because that's what keeps people listening. Another thing you want to think about is that when you're playing phrases in a solo, you want to connect them. So it shouldn't just be islands of different phrases. You kind of want to have the phrase that you play come out of the phrase that you just played and it has to be in some way related to it. And there are different ways of doing that. One way is to think in terms of uh, varying motifs or think in some sort of call response. I think with the example I just played, it's probably mostly call response. But if you wanna make variations on a motif, and actually also with a call response, it's easier if you do it with shorter phrases. It's just easier to relate to. It's easier to make a variation on a three note phrase and compared to one that's 24 notes. So if I play a phrase like, um, then if I have to move it around and use that as a motif, then So now I'm using sort of this as a question and I have an answer phrase that's a little bit longer and then I'm moving it around as well. And of course it's easier to just make those kind of variations and that type of connection between phrases uh, with a phrase like this compared to... It's very difficult and it, there there is a lot of information so the bigger picture gets lost really easily. So if you want to work with motifs and you want to connect phrases and work on that aspect of your playing, playing shorter phrases is often a really good idea. The length of the notes that you're playing in your phrases can also make a huge difference in how the phrase sounds. So you might want to have some phrases with really like long legato, more like vocal uh, like melodies. And you can also have phrases that are sort of at the other end of that spectrum, which are maybe a lot of notes and there are short, maybe even staccato. So you have sort of this contrast between what is staccato and what is legato on really on the level of the phrase as well. 
So that's something that you can actually create a lot of different textures with and also something that you can maybe even make contrasts within one solo and get a call response effect with as well. time when you're creating variation by using longer notes and phrases versus shorter notes it's probably going to be part of a build-up and the example that I just played is a little bit different from this because what that ended up being just to sort of have both extremes in there was sort of a conversation where one side is playing uh, phrases with longer notes and then there's some sort of response with a phrase with shorter notes and then that went back and forth and that illustrates the contrast I think but it doesn't really maybe give an example of how you would normally use this but you have to keep in mind, because very often we also tend to just get caught up in cliches like, well, longer notes are for the beginning of a solo and shorter notes are for the end because it's, there's more happening. But you can actually really create a lot of tension and also create a lot of excitement in a solo by sort of choosing the right note at the right time and repeating that and playing that as a really long note, especially if you're taking a note that has some tension to it. So in this case, I'm playing on a C7 here. And... I think most of us can play a Lydian dominant and then we don't really think about it, it's just a Lydian dominant. But if at some point in the solo we really start to dig into this sharp 11 on top of the chord and really emphasize it, then it becomes a much more effectful scale and that note works really well as a tension note also. I think also sometimes that's something that, that we kind of forget to do when we're really working on the different scales and just thinking in arpeggios and groups of notes. It's also really useful to start thinking and listening for if there's tension and release in the rhythms that we play. So if we define insight from a rhythmical point of view as being stuff that really just sits in the groove and fits with the meter and it's just sort of sounding nice on top of the groove and then we have all the things that are going to be the more tricky off beats or um, cross rhythms and odd note groupings that are sort of rubbing against the meter and creating some tension in that way as being outside you kind of want to have both of those in there and I think for a lot of st styles like uh, jazz and funk and soul then having sort of the rhythmical outside in your soloing is really something that is part of the style uh, but I think also that it's something that you will come across and you kind of want to be able to do also if you're playing other things like blues and rock music <laughs> start by playing something that's really inside the groove and just sort of establishing a connection so we have an idea about okay this is what the music sounds like and what it feels like so something like that really simple it stays in the groove then I start working with adding some tension by playing some uh, offbeat rhythms so stuff that's really not fitting with the groove but doesn't really have any plan other than that so that becomes like You can tell, actually you can tell that with all the rhythmical ideas here, uh, I create some tension and then I resolve it. And that's also what just happened. So I play a lot of offbeats and then I play a short phrase that's back in the groove to sort of release that tension that that creates. The same happens when I start using first a group of uh, a five note grouping. So that was, I think, this one. And then also sort of ending that phrase and the same with a three note grouping. Not that I remember exactly what I, how I resolved it, but the idea is just that you take this group, uh, this grouping, and start working with it, and you sort of let it create a little bit of tension by repeating it, 
and then you resolve it later in the phrase. And that's a good thing to check out. And of course, you probably already have some aspects of this. And you can also choose to just try and play stuff that's off the beat or that is not um, on the heavy beats of the groove. And that way, create some tension. And these are things that you can easily start adding to your solos if you notice that you're not doing that that much. Of course, there are a lot more ways to add variation to your solos than the three things that I talked about in this video. I think the three things that I went over here are fairly easy to start working with already from just what you already can do. Uh, but two other things that I use a lot would be to use different registers. So I would play something really sort of low on the neck or something really high uh, and also use different size intervals. So you'll have part that's really like a more scale movement and other parts are going to be maybe open voice to pitchers. But I'm also curious. So if you have an idea for something that you use a lot and a really nice way to create some variation and maybe some, some really uh, harsh contrast in your solos, then um, leave a comment. Uh, I'm sure that not only I, but also the other people watching would find that really interesting. I think we all want to have as many ideas as possible and get some inspiration to, uh, to create more interesting solos. So uh, comments are more than welcome. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and you've never seen any of my videos before, then subscribe to my channel. I publish a new video every Monday and Thursday, and I've been doing this for quite some time, so there's already really a lot of material on my channel. If you want to help me keep making all these videos, then check out my Patreon page. It's because of the support that I get from my patrons that I can keep on going making all these videos. And if you want to help me keep making videos, then join me over on Patreon. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and on to next week.